Senator Patterson. Senator Wish Wilson. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Uh, the word leadership might suggest to many Australians something like reform, economic reform. It may suggest good, good economic management, but it might also suggest some courage and some vision, some economic vision. Now, Acting Deputy President, you and I have both sat through three Governor General speeches in four years. Three Governor General speeches where a Prime Minister, a new Prime Minister, outlines their vision for this country. Interestingly, for the very first one in 2013, because for those listening, the House of Representatives has to squeeze into the Senate, I sat next to Mr Kevin Rudd, recently deposed Prime Minister. And throughout Tony Abbott's Governor General speech, Mr Tony Abbott's Governor General speech, uh, he kept muttering to himself, this man has no vision. He has no vision. Now, I'm not sure I totally agreed with uh, Kevin Rudd at the time because he had a very clear vision to me and that was to rip up some of the biggest economic reforms we'd seen in this nation in a decade. But I followed it very closely. Uh, I actually snuck out to Mr Malcolm Turnbull's press, uh, press conference the day he uh, took over the economic leadership and I, and I listened to his comments as well. Firstly, he strongly implied there'd be no more three-word slogans. Now, I think we can say that's uh, gone out the door. Uh, but he also said that the Abbott government essentially were poor economic managers and that was what required a change in the Prime Ministership. Now, looking at his Governor-General speech, I still don't see any, any vision and any leadership for this country. We get a policy for $50 billion worth of tax cuts for big business. Now, the Greens led on tax cuts for small business in the last parliament. We took that to the 2013 election. We are very proud we got concessions for hard-working small business in Australia. Now we get $50 billion worth of tax cuts on the forward estimates for big business. Many of them who don't even pay their fair share of tax. And believe me, I've sat on those committees and heard the evidence. This assumption that somehow trickle-down economics is going to stimulate economic activity. What I think will stimulate economic activity, and this is a dangerous idea, Senator Patterson, is the government actually going out at record low interest rates, borrowing money and investing it in productive infrastructure in this country. Now, we got another, another article in the paper today by TD Securities talking about our triple-A credit rating. And it's worth reading it word for word, uh, Senator Williams, through you, Acting Deputy President. They make it very clear that our triple-A credit rating is at risk because of our level of debt. But they also say debt not related to expenditure on productive infrastructure. You see, this is where your government is deceptive and misleading in all your spin and rhetoric about the debt problem in this country. I agree that housing debt is too high in this country, and it is dangerous. I was the one who asked the previous head of the Treasury uh, about the housing bubble and got a two-week reaction during the hockey, uh, Mr Hockey uh, period of Treasury. I'm also concerned about personal consumption and high levels of household debt on consumption. But where is the debate? on what I think is a massive moral challenge of our time, and that is avoiding underinvestment in future generations of this country. Now, I have collected this evidence in two long-ranging Senate inquiries, the Select Committee I chaired and the Rural and Regional Affairs Committee into Regional Capitals. We went right around the country and heard evidence of the massive trillion-dollar infrastructure gap in this country, projects waiting for funding. If we want to stimulate economic demand in this country and get GDP up, which, by the way, would make some of these metrics that Senator Patterson has quoted today not look so bad, we actually had a policy for stimulating the economy and helping invest in future generations. I could list categories of infrastructure we looked at, from small to big. The Productivity Commission said, well, bundling lots of small productive infrastructure projects together is a good idea seeking different ways of financing them, monetising and securitising those infrastructure projects, issuing bonds against projects in regional areas to raise capital, making pools of finance available to local governments, like in Tasmania. We need $900 million 
to upgrade our water infrastructure in Tasmania. Fifteen communities in my state don't have clean drinking water. They have to boil their water. Why isn't that money available? Well, you know what? The federal government could show leadership on this issue by making capital available for productive and transformative infrastructure projects. It could borrow money at record low interest rates and make that available to both local governments and state governments. Do you think it's the Greens are the only people who are calling for government to take an active role in the lives of Australians? Do you think it's the Greens? Well, you'd be wrong, Senator Williams, for a new chair. Dr John Hewson, one of the first people to appear at our inquiry, was the one who put this idea to the Select Committee. Saul Eslake, the departed Mr Glenn Stevens, they're all out there saying the same thing. What is wrong with government that we can't show leadership and invest in the future of this country? It's because of this D word, dirty debt, and it starts here in this chamber with a height and spin we hear from the Conservatives in this parliament. Let's have an honest discussion about debt and why it can be useful for us and why it's probably the only alternative we have in the paradigm that we are entering where monetary policy all around the world has lost its potency. Actually, it's fiscal policy that's going to get us through a potential recession. It's fiscal policy that will help give us jobs in our communities all around this country and invest in the infrastructure that we need for future generations. And by infrastructure, I tell you, I'm in a really broad category of infrastructure. We're not just talking about concrete roads. We're talking about public transport. We're talking about telecommunications. We are talking about dams, actually, Senator Williams. Up in Townsville, I got some excellent proposals for infrastructure investment in dams that were not being financed. And our committee worked out why the private sector wasn't financing these infrastructure projects, why there's a clear market failure and a role for government in our lives in this country. That is economic leadership. That is economic leadership. It's worth reading the latest quarterly essay, Mr Acting Deputy President. George Meklagenis talks about uh, balancing Act. He talks about how we're going to get through what is ultimately going to be uh, the doldrums for our country and our economy in the coming years. And the conclusion he arrives at also is we need infrastructure spending to uh, invest in future generations and stimulate the economy. But he also said we need a new structure around infrastructure financing and how projects are selected, how they are depoliticised, because that is what the private sector are seeing as risk. That is the risk premiums they are building into their expectation on infrastructure financing. And that is why they don't want to touch a lot of these infrastructure projects that are sitting there waiting to be funded. Well, government should bloody well fund them, in my opinion, to, uh, through you, uh, Acting Deputy President, because what we need in this country is economic leadership. Not more spin, uh, leave it to the private sector, uh, leave it to big business, and, and everything will be fine. Now, in terms of vision and leadership, it really does disappoint me that over those three Governor General speeches we've gone from the age of entitlement to suddenly the same, uh, the same ideological attack on poor people in this country. The taxes and tax knots, uh, the same rhetoric. This stuff is not flying. People don't care about that. They actually want to see government step in and show leadership and play an active role in their life. This kind of uh, IPA, uh, liberal, young Liberal Party politics doesn't cut it with people out on the street. Sorry, Senator Patterson, through Acting Deputy President, it just doesn't cut it. People want to see governments playing an active role in their life. And it is a historic opportunity for us to nation build right now to select projects we do want to see uh, capital go into, projects that can be financed over time, projects that can be paid off, projects that can be monetised, projects that can create employment for Australians all around this country, projects that lead to a more prosperous country, that make us more sustainable, give us a better quality of living, that make us happier. These are the things we need to do as government. And I'm proud to say, if you don't think I have the evidence to support this, then go look at the select committee into infrastructure financing that we completed the week before the double disillusion. Uh, and it was backed by both the Liberal and the Labor Party. There was no dissenting report. <coughs> have a read of it. There's six months of evidence gone in that from experts, including Standard & Poor's, by the way, Senator Patterson, through your acting deputy president. And it deals with the issue of AAA credit rating and why this can be done 
and why $50 billion is not unreasonable for us to go out and borrow now and invest now. $50 billion? Let's borrow it, let's invest it and cut the crap about debt. Thank you, Senator Wish Wilson. Before I call you, Senator Cameron, I advise that at the conclusion of your contribution, we will suspend the matter of public importance for a first speech. Senator Cameron. <laughs>